Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, March 13. The Electoral Office of Jamaica, EOJ, is reporting that all systems are in place to receive Friday's nominations of candidates for the by-election in the Portland Eastern constituency. The by-election is on April 4 and the nominations will be received between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on March 15 at the Port Antonio Courthouse. The EOJ is reminding candidates that they are to fill out a nomination form which has been signed by any 10 or more electors registered to vote in the constituency. They are to return the form to the returning officer between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Candidates are also required to pay a nomination fee of $15,000. Eligible candidates to sit in the House of Representatives should be at least 21 years old, a citizen of Jamaica, a resident of Jamaica for at least 12 months prior to the date of nomination, or a Commonwealth citizen who has been living on the island for the past year. The Portland Eastern seat became vacant upon the death of the sitting Member of Parliament, Dr. Linville Bloomfield, last month. In other news, $20 million has been allocated for surveillance equipment and enforcement activities to regulate fishing in Jamaican waters. The money is from the Fisheries Management and Development Fund Board. Portfolio Minister Audley Shaw made the announcement yesterday during a media briefing on the conch industry, which is currently closed for the season until January 31, 2020. The strategy is simply to use the vessel monitoring system technology to have 24-7 information of who is legally out there and where they are. And further, even if our enforcement officers don't see them for whatever reason, intelligence from our officials who see the poachers will allow us to use the satellite imagery to narrow in on their location to increase the likelihood of apprehending them. Minister Shaw says regulations will be in place soon to mandate all locally licensed motor fishing vessels to have the system aboard. It's expected that surveillance and enforcement activities will not be confined to illegal fishing in our offshore areas, but will spread far and wide to stop illegal fishing in nearshore areas and fisheries-related activities on mainland Jamaica. The fisheries minister also revealed that plans were far advanced for the establishment of multi-agency enforcement teams, which will be comprised of the police, Coast Guard, the Fisheries Division, and the Pradial Larceny Prevention Unit. Minister Shaw, meanwhile, is calling for a comprehensive multi-pronged approach to tackle unregulated fishing in Jamaican waters. Speaking specifically to the conch industry, he says arrangements are in place to strengthen collaboration and cooperation with other key queen conch producing countries in CARICOM. These include the Bahamas, Belize, and Turks and Caicos Islands. The ultimate objective of the advocacy and diplomacy will be to achieve meaningful collaboration and cooperation amongst Queen Kong producing countries, between Queen Kong producing countries and Queen Kong importing countries, and between Queen Kong producing countries and the flag state of foreign poachers. Between January 2011 and March 2019, 10 foreign fishing vessels were caught fishing illegally in Jamaican waters. Minister Shaw says he has plans to address the ministers of these countries when he meets with them in St. Kitts in May. I'm going to be sitting down face to face with the ministers from those countries where the poachers are primarily from. I'm going to be saying to them, Dominican Republic, Honduras, Nicaragua, please keep your fisher folk away from Jamaican waters. 240 ancillary workers from 40 schools across St. James, Clarendon, St. Andrew and Kingston will be certified through a partnership involving the Heart Trust NTA and the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. The move is in response to the 2016 Integrated Community Development Project School Ancillary Worker Survey. It found that a large number of ancillary workers lacked formal certification. During the recent contract signing, Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed said the project was valued at $10.8 million and would last from April 2019 to March 2020. Workers will be trained by the Heart Trust NTA in various skill areas, including food safety, nutrition, water sanitation and hygiene, customer service, safety and security, plant maintenance and landscaping. I want 
the Jamaican um, workforce to be properly trained and certified provides um, greater mobility, greater flexibility, um, the development of the human capital. We're going to attract higher and better quality investments in our, in our country. It should inure to greater productivity, uh, driving economic growth, driving GDP. So we move our GDP per capita from 5,500 to 30, 40,000, 60,000 US. Right? That's the kind of prosperity that we're talking about. The Jamaica Bauxite Institute, JBI, is entering phase seven of its multifaceted Bauxite Community Development Program, BCDP. Since its 1996 inception, the BCDP has invested over $800 million to ensure sustainable development for communities impacted by bauxite mining. Projects have been implemented in the areas of education and training, agriculture, infrastructure, and water harvesting. At yesterday's JIS think tank, BCDP project coordinator Clarence Osborne said under a water harvesting and greenhouse facility, 160 greenhouses had been built in eight sites across four bauxite areas. It saw each farmer getting a 3,000 square foot greenhouse equipped with solar irrigation pumps to carry out production. That component of the program is facilitated through a partnership involving the JBI, bauxite companies, and the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. So far, the program is going exceptionally well. We work on a basis that the farmers receive 70% of what they, so they, have, they, have, they sell, and 30% is retained for the um, sustainability of the program. This assists them to buy the next uh, mater material for the next crop and chemicals, etc., to sustain the, the program. And finally, Jamaicans have taken up six of the eight scholarships being offered in greenhouse management by the Jamaica Bauxite Institute, JBI. The scholarships are tenable at the College of Agriculture, Science and Education, CASE, through the Alcan Rio Tinto Legacy Fund Scholarship Program. It complements the Bauxite Community Development Program. We realize that we need to have trained persons to assist in the greenhouse management and we were not able to find that easily. Each person after they have graduated from the college will go back to the, their respective con community in which the greenhouse cluster is located and provide some amount of assistance to these. They will be given a choice of either working for a year as a paid person or they can get a greenhouse to manage for themselves. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.